Good morning. Welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. My name is Teresa Brown, and my fellow Minister of the Word is John Majorana. On behalf of Church of the Ascension, we welcome all our guests and visitors. We gather as family to live out our mission, proclaim the Word, celebrate the Eucharist, and serve the local community. Our vision is to be a thriving, spirit-filled faith community, transforming lives for Christ. Our role as missionary disciples is to share the love of Christ with whomever we meet. We are blessed to have you here with us today. Today's Mass is streamed live. We are united today both in person and with our online family. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Joe, assisted by Deacon Miles. The Mass intention for this liturgy is for the deceased Ken Whitelaw. Please take a moment to silence your cell phones. Anointing of the sick is offered after Mass today. Those seeking the sacrament, please come to the front rows by the baptismal font. If anyone is assisting that person coming for the sick, <coughs> will sit behind them so that they can place their hand on the shoulder of the, the anointee uh, at the proper time. And then we ask the rest of you to leave Mass uh, quickly afterwards. The, lady auxiliary, the ladies' auxiliary is having their planned sale after Mass is this weekend. All proceeds support their charitable endeavors. The Eastern Shore dry, Clothing Drive for Migrant Workers continues this week. Drop off donated items by April 29th in Mary's Corner. Thank you. Our Spring Craft Show is Saturday, April 27th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the ACC with 50 crafters and vendors, a bake sale, and kitchen concessions. Do your Mother's Day shopping and support our parish. New photo sessions have been added to our parish directory. See the bulletin, Friday email, and the website for additional information, and volunteer to help on photo session day. And now a member of our parish council has some words for you. It'll catch on someday. Good morning, everyone. My name is Aaron Banier, Parish Council. For uh, several months, one weekend a month after the Masses, we've had coffee with the Council, where some of us would be out there uh, engaging parishioners and guests, explaining who we are, what we do, and answering some questions. And it turns out you guys have some frequently asked questions, so we'll go through a few of them right now. Question number one, can we have a playground? The, uh, uh, we hope so, yes, there's a lot to consider with that, but it is priority and we have an action team on it. If anyone has experience or knowledge about uh, zoning, permitting, or playgrounds, we're not asking you to do the whole thing, but if you have expertise that could help the parish, please let us know. Question number two, what about the empty lot on the corner where the office house building used to be? Our current plan is to leave that a green space. According to the city, we need all of the permeable ground we can get. It's also very close to a dangerous, busy road, so we're limited there. And besides, green space is good for the soul, and it is pretty. Question number three, is there a way we can augment the audio of the mass for some of us who are hard at hearing, like a Bluetooth or streaming thing? Um, hopefully, maybe. The technology does exist, and it's getting better all the time. Um, we will look into it and see what we can come up with. If there are any tech wizards out there who know such things and have economical ideas on how to do it, um, please give us a shout and we can get you plugged in to the parish. Oh. Um, question number four, 
What's up with the old elevator out there? Some of us aren't getting any younger, you know. The, um, that's technically, it's a lift, and it does work. It was refurbished not long ago, recently serviced, and it does work. A full-size elevator is very expensive, quarter million initial estimate, and that was years ago. They're also very large. We're limited on places where we can put it. But in the future, if this you know, continues to rise, we can certainly oh. elevate the priority of all of this. So um, there's, I could go on and on with more questions, but that's it for this morning. Don't encourage him. Finally, um, it's, I've been on Parish Council nearly two years. It's been a great experience, and I have a lot of respect and appreciation for the talent and resourcefulness of people behind the scenes. It's been great. So if, um, if you would like to learn more about Parish Council or um, just slam us with questions and riddles, we'd be happy to talk to you, anyone with a red name tag. And uh, thanks for your time and your generosity over the years. And thank you for joining us for Mass. Would you please rise and greet those around you? Spirit. Amen. The grace, mercy, and peace of God our loving Father be with each of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us bring our pleas to the Good Shepherd now. Lord Jesus, in you we take refuge, our only refuge. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your mercy endures forever. O Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, yours is the name, Jesus, Savior, by which we are saved. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and bring each of us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest.
to a share in the joy of heaven that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before us. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Good morning. Oh, we have a few more coming. Okay. It is a lot, isn't it? We have a flock. Okay. Good. <laughs> What's that? Okay. How is? Okay, you do. Why? Right. Well, we're going to get to that in just a second. Okay. 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 Do you know what a good shepherd is? You don't know what a good a shepherd? shepherd is a thing who takes care of sheep. Yeah, that's right. A, th a thing? Okay. All right. Huh? It's a blessing. A blessing, yes. Indeed it is. It is. Okay. Do you, you know who Jesus is? Je Jesus is the shepherd, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And who are, who are his sheep? Who are his sheep? Huh? Us. That's right. That's right. And me too. Me too. All of us. We're all, we're all sheep and we follow him, right? And he takes care of us. And he even lays down his life for us. Those are the sheep that we Huh? Those, those sheep are called your sheep. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So he takes care of us, right? And he takes care of you. And we would like for somebody to carry the cross who hasn't carried the cross yet. Who hasn't carried it yet. You I, ha haven't. I have it. You have it? Okay, would you like to carry it? Okay. Okay, have you carried it before? I did the carry. I haven't. You haven't? Okay, we'll let you carry it. Okay, would you please lead us out? We set you for to hear the word of the Lord. Take these words to heart and walk in God's ways. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all of the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm going to tell you a story of something I know about. Uh, A woman was in the habit of greeting her husband when he came home from work every day at the door, welcoming home. He came home and she wasn't there. And he entered the house and found his Surprise, muddy footprints on the rug. Through the hall, he went back and tripped over a number of toys, entered the back parlor, and smelled an obviously overcooked meal. 
Where was she? He looked out into the back terrace, and she was sitting out there just staring at the fence. He came out and said, What's wrong? What's going on around here? And she finally spoke and said, I don't have the energy to go on simply existing. Quite a shocking thought, isn't it? But I can speak without criticizing and really having some sympathy with that woman because I had an event like that in my own life. Would you believe it? I tried to think it out 70 years ago. 70 years ago. A very black, melancholy day. I don't know what caused it all, but I, I was terrible. And a good friend of mine got me out of it. I was in early, very early 20s, I think. It was black. It was terrible. So I suggest this as an opening story to you because I suspect some of you have had similar days. You don't want to go on just simply existing. But if you're a person of faith, and I suspect many, many of you are, of varying degrees of faith, some momentous degrees, you have taken to the words of Jesus, I came that you may have life and life to the full. And you recognize that it's more than simply existing. It's commitment. It's doing things, worthwhile things, advancing things, becoming what you haven't been before. Maturing, maybe, is a word you could use. But something that's God-given and in many cases because of faith being something that's an invitation on your part, somehow, mysteriously, through God's invitation, it's become a way of life for you. So that is why I want to introduce this notion of the good shepherd. I used to teach Latin, so in my mind comes the, the kind of thing in Latin. He's not a mercenarius. He's not a hired hand. He's the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. But you know, he calls us to lay down our life. Take up your cross to follow me. But follow me, please. <clears throat> Become Christ-like. Becoming what you are destined to be. And for that reason, he became one like us. He became enfleshed in our flesh. This is the incarnation. This is what he carried through a human life. Life us in all things except sin. Oh boy, think about that constantly. In every way, he's like us, humanly, as well as divinely. And that is how he can be the very best shepherd there is.
I came that you may have life and life to the full. Let me talk about that. The burden of the homily I carry from one single phrase in the gospel you heard. The Father loves me because I lay down my life. Now we call that in religious talk self-sacrifice. It takes all kinds of variety of forms, but you get to know them because they're the opposite of egoism and all the rest of self-service. They are sacrificial. In many various ways, sacrificial. So I go now to what I want to say very shortly about that phrase in our gospel that you may learn from it and match it to your own practical experience match it to your own history disciples you know and i'm speaking of the ones we call disciples or ultimately apostles Disciple means sit and learn. Apostle means go forth and do. A disciple models his life, her life, on the life of the master. In this specimen of holy writ, we'll call that master the shepherd. Disciple Jesus is not a mercenary follower. He doesn't do it for, ta- for pay or for merit or for reward or reputation. The disciple of Jesus follows out of love. Love manifested, love given, love received. Out of a grateful heart out of desire to serve, out of a willingness to lay down his life, her life, for this purpose. This could simply be a meaningless sentiment. But the key is prayer of various types. Just thinking about God. Like the cure of ours said, I go and make a visit, I just look at him and he looks at me. That kind of contemplation. As we pray, we are. We pray, ultimately, to be the selfish one, like the shepherd. We pray for commitment to what we believe. We say that we will hear the voice of this good shepherd leading us, guiding us. We pray for that shepherd to show us the way. We could put that in our own language and say how it's done. We dedicate our lives down for each other. Well, when we say those kind of prayers, accept that you're saying something dangerous. The unexpected will happen. If you got some years on you, you've had it. You've had the unexpected. The thing that catches you off guard the thing you have to deal with. But if you pray, you're ready. I repeat the phrase from the gospel you heard. This is why my father loves me. 
that I lay down my life. Now, in ordinary human terms, isn't that a kind of gruesome statement? If your father loves you because you're ready to die, that's maybe a conclusion. Do you think the little Jesus being born from Mary began life on that kind of note? I know I'm ready to die. Not sadly. He was born into a happy family. He probably started out by thinking his father loved him because he had a son. Then later, he might have thought that his father loved him because he turned out to be a good son, a surprisingly good son. Growing older, he may have thought his father loved him because he did his father's work. I too can play on double meanings like our speaker this morning. He did Joseph's work and he did his almighty father's work. Finally, Jesus figured probably that other people loved him because he was compassionate towards them. He cured their ills. It was not until death was imminent that I believe that Jesus finally realized how little difference his life had made. Little difference is made. Being his son seemed to be important only to Jesus himself. That is, thinking of Joseph, his foster father. Being a good son was important only to his father. He cured, knowingly, only a small fraction of a million of sick people. And all of them died in the end because that's what we do. It must have come as a great shock to Jesus to see in spite of the infinite hope and effort he had made in his public life, the world seemed little better. All he had left to give, he had to realize was death, his death, his own death. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But ultimately, that moment passed. And he could then say, into your hands, I commend my spirit. In the most dark moment of his life, going back to the think of a typical woman saying, as my story, I don't have the energy to go on being lifeless, purposeless. And we sing, into your hands, Lord, we commend our spirit. At that moment, Jesus finally saw the light. He was ready to lay down his life. So none of us has a God for a father except by adoption. We have to check constantly to see whether we, our life, 
mirrors Jesus' life in any significant way. That's our purpose in life. We began life because a man and a woman loved each other. And we think both of them love us just because we are their child. We tried to learn the respect of our peers growing up. The appreciation of our employer, maybe. The gratitude of our country. And I'm sure that's true of many of you. We even tried to earn God's love by being a good person. Our neighbors love by being kind. We try to spend our life donating to charity or lobbying for some good, solid purpose. Until one day, it probably dawned on us that we we're going to die. Just like it came and dawned in the mind of Jesus. They say middle age is a broad span of life that you can get distracted in it. But they say that the middle of the midlife is probably the decisive day we realize that we personally are going to die. You know, it comes front center. The philosopher Andre Malraux very pithily said, there is no death. There is only my dying. And how true that is, I think. I experienced that. You think, I'm going to die. The rest of you, I, I don't know about. So it shocks us, that realization. It frightens us, really. We are like the little prince who wanted to hire soldiers to protect him from death. But he was told that that couldn't happen. He wanted to die by his parents hiring a little playmate. But he was told that death wasn't negotiable. He wanted to die dressed in his best clothing so that he could be different from the peasants. But he was told that death erases all differences. His sad conclusion, this little prince, that really there is no power in being a prince. But I say to you, there's even less power in not being a prince. Our spouse loves us, and some spouses leave us. Our children are loyal, but sometimes ungrateful. Our friends are faithful and sometimes forgetful. We get a watch from our company, our flag, a flag from our country. In spite of our compassion, 
The poor get poorer, and the killing goes on, like now. We wonder what difference we have made. And what we could have done. We finally arrive at the same conclusion as Jesus did. Don't be shocked when I say it's this. We are worth more dead than alive if we engage in self-sacrifice like he did. But that's an, a conclusion. We understand that only after we have worked through other promising alternatives when we have exhausted all of our possibilities, we don't have to discount our efforts. We may not prize death too early in life, but we must earn the right to die if we have value in front of us. I came that you may have life and life to the full, eternal life to the full. So I end my few words with three questions. The first question is one I want to pin you with. What am I living for? The second question follows on the heels of that one. What am I willing to die for? And there's a third question. The third question is, what does my master want of me? What does my master want of me? And I'm going to just, it's constant love. Love returned for love. What am I worth? everything for him because he loves me you passionately passionately I would say amen finish but I'd rather say learn it my brothers, my sisters, learn it, learn it well. Free. <laughs> Will you please rise and join in the profession of our faith? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and on the third day, in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son. 
who the Father and the Son adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Christ is truly the shepherd of his people, concerned for their safety, their well-being. He leads them forward in his way, his truth, his life. Confident of his concern, we bring to the Father, his Father and ours, our needs, the needs of his world, so clearly present to us always. On this Vocations Sunday, for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, that God will raise up good shepherds in our midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church under the guidance of Pope Francis, as he continues to make Jesus known to the world through words of hope and works of love, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear, Lord, hear our prayer. On Earth Day, we pray for the world we live in, that God may open our eyes to recognize the goodness of all creation and help us to do what we can do to restore and care for the wonderful gift that we have been given. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer for world peace that leaders may cooperate with one another to bring prosperity for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your comfort and healing to all who carry the cross of pain and suffering, especially Mary Melangumu, David Altizer, Bernadette Lenahan, for those names of the chronically ill listed in the bulletin, those names written in the book of prayer in the commons, and for those names we mention aloud now. Father, Mary, and Father. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, that they may be welcomed into your eternal kingdom, especially for the names written in the book of prayer in the commons, and for our deceased weekend mass intentions, Susan Paulson, Delia Lunison, Ken Whiteclaw, Deo Gracias Gamboa, Leonicio Malabanan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, who sent your Son to be our Good Shepherd, whose death became our salvation our victory over sin and death. We seek your continued protection as we grow in your love and learn to follow your example. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
my brothers, my sisters, that our sacrifice find favor before God, who is for each of us a loving Father. Grant we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, that the renewal constantly working in us may be the cause of unending joy. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But now, on this season, on this very midday, above all, to laud you more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sin of the world by dying. He has destroyed our death. By rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, we renew it now in this midday, midtime of joy of Easter. To laud you and to laud every people, exulting in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts, sing now together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly causes you to have praise for through your son our lord jesus by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and you make all things holy and you never cease to gather to yourself this people this people that you love that some from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for sacrifice, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. For, O oh Lord, 
as we celebrate this memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy, this living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon this oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, where blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, all your saints, in whose constant intercession we rely in your presence, we ask for your unfailing help. May this sacrifice be our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord. May it advance the, pray, the, the peaceful salvation of all your world. Be pleased to confirm our faith and our charity, our, your pilgrim church on this earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, priests, deacons, and professed religious, but the entire people you have gained as your own. Your own, your sons and daughters. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered elsewhere for our departed brothers and sisters, especially Ken, for whom we offer this Eucharist. All who have been pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your, to your kingdom, your kingdom which begins now, for with it completed coming to us, we enjoy the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your kindness, keep us free from sin. Protect us from every needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. O Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Look not upon our sinfulness, but upon our faithfulness, and grant each one of us the peace, the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you now. And with your spirit.
with one another. <laughs> Let us share a sign of peace with one another. <laughs> This is the Lamb of God. This is he who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, Lord in our mercy, we shall under my roof. But all he say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. May the body and the blood of Christ preserve our souls through life, life ever resident, everlasting.
precious body, precious one, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares a feast Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is poured. Come share the supper of the Lord. This is the bread of God coming down. For those that are taking the communion to the home bow, would you please come forward? Thank you. Good morning. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. As shepherds of this Eucharist, uh, please take home this body and blood of Christ that those persons that you are taking this to uh, may receive this in their minds, their bodies, and their souls. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Precious body, precious We pray again. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures 
the sheep you have redeemed by this most precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you once again for joining us on this fourth Sunday of Easter. And we have a couple of important announcements to make. Um, number one, in the interest of safety, the church's main entrance will be locked on weekdays after morning mass. To enter the building during business hours, please go to the new parish office entrance and the main entrance doors will be timed to unlock for any after hours scheduled meetings. So just remember to uh, enter through the new parish office entrance. Uh, after this mass, we will have an anointing of the sick right up here as is our normal custom. And this will occur right after this mass. And at this time, I'd like to welcome any guests or visitors. So if we have any guests or visitors at this Mass, would you please rise and please tell us your name and where you're from? From Nevada. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yes, yes. Yes, good morning. Yes. I'm Amanda Standle, and this is my dad, Walter. Amanda and Walter, welcome. And where are you from, South Amanda? South Carolina. From South Carolina. Very good. Thank you. Pardon me? I said I want to clap for that, but I'm not a <laughs> Okay. Well, welcome. We welcome all. So thank you for joining us today, Walter and Amanda. Thank you. Did I miss anyone? Okay. Would you please rise for Father's final blessing? The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May the good shepherd lead you into all truth. May the good shepherd guard you from danger. May the good shepherd bring you to your everlasting home. May God bless you now, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 This Mass is ended. We go in the peace of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.